Um, Bulelani is going to speak on managing credit for small business owners just to share his experience and his journey. He's been an entrepreneur since he was 14. Um, I won't share how old he is now, but he's been an entrepreneur for a very long time. He's won a lot of rewards um, and he's here to come and share. Please can we put our hands together for Bulelani Balabala, Mr. Get Things Done. <laughs> uh, Dumela. Yeah, no, I hardly speak at tea. I actually choose not to speak at tea because I believe that it's a platform we've created for other amazing thought leaders. Topic A Chalet. Lady Colo Tiger. Erbono Hur Kai Di Rajwang. No Yaza Mapel and Anna Setembisa Pati. No, man, um, thank you so much to everyone who's come out um, this morning. Um, we've got some amazing people here, our stakeholder, um, NetBank, um, their amazing team. Um, I think, I don't know if he's left, Mr. Reddy, thank you. Our speakers, Nusi, Lerato, are here as well, thank you. Uh, special acknowledgement to Dr. Rakudu. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. The youngest chief, uh, Royal Bafu Gang, is with us here today. Um, thank you. So for me, so I think, so I hardly ever do presentations, but I did a quick Yana thing, not for you, but for me to remember certain things, because I hardly ever speak. Okay, cool. So <coughs> my name is Bulelani Balabala. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. Sometimes I speak professionally. And over the past 17 years of being an entrepreneur, um, having started my business out at Tembisa. The topic of the day, this particular day, is one of the topics that are very close to my heart. It's not my subject matter, but I'll tell you why it's close to my heart. One of the biggest things when you engage with any entrepreneur that they talk about is how they need access to capital. Whether that capital is through DFIs, is through banks, is through any, in, it's through any financial institutions who would then have criteria, criteria documentation and requirements and you'd need to fulfill them. Um, through either having a clean credit score or, number one, have the right documentation that would allow you to participate in the ring. And most of the time, as entrepreneurs, you don't have those documents, and it puts you at a disadvantage. And then sometimes, unfairly, these institutions are nonsense, they are whatever, and sometimes, fairly, you discriminate yourself by not fully participating in the opportunities that are available to you, right? So we're talking about managing scholar, right? So what, one of the biggest things that I've picked up, and I think the gentleman who came before me um, was talking about, and I think for me it's just to simply share from an entrepreneur's perspective, talking to other entrepreneurs, right? And I think some of the things I used to do in my early entrepreneurial journey is how kolota motu, when you are late for delivering client orders or services, what's the first thing you do? You do, you don't answer, there are calls. Why? Because haki fades. So you don't answer the bank if it's the bank. You don't answer if mashonesa, if mashonesomkolotang, if it's your uncle, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your ex, or whatever. You just simply don't answer your your phone. But the biggest challenge with that is that it it exacerbates the problem. It makes for an even bigger problem than the one that you have at that particular moment. One of the best ways to deal with any problem or to any, one of the best ways to manage any crisis is by simply doing the work of managing it actively. What does that simply mean? It's not a smart concept. Just grab the bull by the horns. So the moment I understood that it doesn't matter how much I owe any institution, but for as long as I call them before they call me, number one. And I start to familiarize myself with the individual who's always calling me, whether it's in client services or the sort, to the point where they know me. Those are the individuals who start advocating for me in that particular institution. Then it makes it easier. No, no, you guys are 128,000 rand. Yes, it's gaining interest each and every month. I'm going to make an arrangement of 3,000 rand a month. Mara, this month isn't so bad. Mara, I want to go to the phone. I want to go who wants a horikizamilo? Tola etamiana. I'm ten steps ahead of you in this particular regard. Most of the time, 
The only time, or most of the time, we talk to our accountants, our bankers, or our lawyers, if you get to that particular point and instance, it's when there's something to talk to them about or when there's an opportunity. So that's reactive. That's being reactive as an entrepreneur. If you are if you if you are banking right now with your if you are banking right now, you've got a business bank account, you've got what is called the relationship manager. That individual might be dealing with anywhere between five hundred to about three thousand um, active accounts. But if you are persistent enough, you could then be persistent enough in securing a meeting with this individual. And the premise of the meeting at an introductory level is simple. I've got this account, I've got this account with you, I finally have a meeting with you, my company does X, Y, and Z. Our five, seven year goals are, you know, to buy a vehicle financed. It would be to buy an office building. It would be to buy equipment, and this is the cost of this equipment. Now, at the moment, we only make 2,000 rand a month. But what do I need to do to position my finances in such a way that we then start to measure them out so that whether it's 12 months, 24 months, 48 months, I am actively able to come back to your institution and apply for credit. That then is you positioning your growth with a long-term growth perspective. Now, because they also then are working actively with you, it becomes easier for you, for them to motivate for certain things for you within the bank. No, I share this because I've got a personal experience with, you know, a banker I used to work with many years ago. And I simply did that. I was like, I'm in Tembisa, I'm in printing, I'd like to buy a machine. The machine is 480,000 rand. I don't have the 480,000 rand. The repayment of this machine at the time, I mean, it was well over 10,000 rand. Yeah, I know. Guys, if you can just tell uh, the musician outside to turn the volume down, please. I love music, but hey, what a step. But one of the things that I then did is to say to this particular institution, can I have meetings with you so that you can help me direct my finances in the right, way, in the right direction? And then let me be as diligent and very diligent enough to follow your advice and to ensure that I follow that financial advice in the right way. But it starts with you managing that finance and managing the finance in the right way. So rethink, rethink how you view problems. So sometimes when we find ourselves in debt, or when we find ourselves, uh, you know, stepped out with our creditors, you know, how we, sort of, how we sort of view and what some of the things that we need to do in rethinking is simply this. Some of the things that put you in negative or bad positions or bad standings sometimes are not a sum total of your value as an individual. So what do I mean by that is, Sometimes we undermine even the options of downgrading our lifestyles or even downgrading to a smaller office purely because the scholar keeps growing each and every month. So the capital debt, the, the old amount onto the capital debt with the interest compounded each and every month. You are paying the monthly repayments, but they don't cover, you know, the sum total of what you actually owe. So in actual fact, you, you're just paying interest. And the capital amount stays there, it doesn't go anywhere. So our psychology around how we view debt and how we view ourselves, having found ourselves in indebted positions, throws us off completely. But here's the thing. When you don't understand the lay of the land, you can't play the game. You know, in, in certain instances, if it was a marketing conversation, a branding sales conversation, I would have said, if you don't have a competitive advantage, you've got no need to be competing. If you don't have the understanding of finances, basic understanding of finances or how the game works, you've got no business trying to, you know, even say that the institutions themselves are not in their most advantageous positions for them to participate and play in the game. So when I understood years ago that there was something called TransUnion, and I could simply go onto their website and simply after a couple of hours I could download a credit report and I could download a credit report for myself and also for my company. That would give me a clear understanding and a window of what my credit score was. That was a game changer. 
Now then I understood that, okay, cool. So if I need to play the financial game, I need to actually understand the financial game. And what is the financial game? So they won't give me money because they don't know if I will be trustworthy with their money. So I then need to then start with lower accounts to then show them each and every month that I'm able to pay those accounts and then get longer contractual accounts, maintain them extremely well, even though I can afford them upfront in cash. So it opens me up to then coming and say, I'd actually like to buy a 30,000 Rand uh, GTI. So there, my banker was, well, the, the issue with you, Mr. Balabala, is that you don't have a credit profile. We, I mean, even if I can see you making money, and at that particular point, we were making money. We are making very good money each and every month. But we are like, but we can't give you money because there's nothing on your credit profile that says that we can trust you with money. So what do you suggest? No, we suggest maybe you go open a clothing account. It's seamless, it doesn't cost you anything, but I also understand their terms. If you open it up and you're able to pay them back, whatever you've taken within 30 days, you could literally take the stuff, pay it back within 30 days, take the stuff back and they credit, it's still gonna appear in your credit profile. I was like, wow, that's very interesting. So I did that activity and I did that exercise. Don't tell the clothing account um, the company, the clothing companies, but I did that exercise. Then we then moved on after that, we then got a cell phone account. From there, we then were starting to play the game. So we're not overindulging. We're playing within the parameters of what we thought. What were we playing for? We were playing for the long game. So we increase our credit score to increase our credit score, but also to put us in an advantageous position so that when there are opportunities that come up and you need, sorry, and you need capital funding for a project or you need procurement funding for a project and you're going there to apply and they're asking you for a number of documents and then they then check your credit score, it should not put you in a disadvantageous position because one of your biggest, biggest currencies as a small business owner, as an individual, a human being, is your name. Your name is gold. Manage that credit score like no one's business. But just again, you can't manage what you don't know. Uh, please beam up the presentation. I just want to align my, my thinking. So I spoke about playing the game. Your name is super, 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 super important. You know what the reality as well is? I speak this under the back burner of the reality that majority of small businesses are in debt. So this then advice then also then speak to one of the things that used to help us, especially from a capital perspective in managing our overheads and our cost of sales is once every quarter, without fail, I sit, I relook all contracts we have with suppliers. Can they optimize their costs? I sit with the insurance company once a year. We call them up, especially three months after they've, in, they've given us an increase. Um, listen, man, I just wanted to check. Could I talk to the manager? No, no, there's no problem, but I just wanted to know, you know, could you guys potentially relook our account? You know, I know that, you know, we've been consistent. We've been paying each and every month. Could you potentially relook our account? And it was an interesting factor, right, that they were able to reduce the cost because they're re-evaluating, right? The risk. So we, because we, we are not claiming, we are not claiming as much as we should or, or as much as we have the opportunities to. Number two, we are paying them well each and every month, which then means that because of good activity, it makes our costs to them much cheaper. And what, what's an interesting factor is this, is that the same items that are insured for X amount have become cheaper, you know, over a 12-month period, you know, cheaper by over 40%. Why? Because you are actively putting your hand on the pulse of your business. And sometimes I understand that, you know, one of the most expensive commodities being a small business owner is giving away your time. You know, which is why it's like, yo, okay, but be this a happy hore, marare lang, because once a bullet shop, sonsa kreki se dilo, sonsa kese kire ink, kire ink, kire ink. So your time is the most precious thing. Which is why, which, whether it's a once a quarter for you or once every six months for you, it's important to say, okay, cool, what's king? Kreki sa dikota, borota ke brakakai. Is this actually the cheapest place to buy the bread? Paloni ke rakakai. Achaki rakakai. 
You know, is it cheaper to buy it in bulk than I just buy a refrigerator? Go mark Krokishwa high one ke buy a five thousand randa kibia mola ke plake and then have the things there in bulk because they're non perishable, meaning that they last they could last me two years without them losing flavor or the quality. Or is it actually cheaper switching over to another supplier? And if I switch over to another supplier, in in certain cases, are they switching costs? So in certain cases, switching costs become applicable if you're switching over and it's insurance policies, life covers, or whatsoever the case. They, those then might have switching impl uh, implications. But in a situation where you might not even have a supplier contract, you just have a supplier agreement or you filled in a supplier form, you need to consistently re-optimize the cost. But going back to that other part, rethink. Because when you are asking a blue chip organization for a discount, number one, have you created the traction? for them to be able to then reference and say, we know you. Number two, it doesn't make you look cheap. In actual fact, it makes you look like a savvy, savvy business owner when you've been able to reduce something that everybody else is paying for an exorbitant amount. And what did that do? You're in a great position to have accessible cash flow to put back into your business. Why? Because cash is king. Majority of the things that you want to do require you to demonstrate that your cash flow projections, your cash flow charts are in good standing. But also, over and above that, if you do not have the cash flow to sustain anything you're doing, then you know you put yourself in, in a bad space for future growth and growing your business and moving it to the next level. Manage your customer credit. So there are two parts to this conversation. And some of the things that get us into debt is not doing this well. Sometimes what we do is So not managing that well puts you in a very negative position. So, you know, depending on some of the contracts or some of the deals that you have, sometimes you get contracts and deals where you need to supply a sign-up supplier agreement to certain suppliers. And then you find that, you know, when you invoice your customers after 30 days, they pay on a six, sorry, they, they ask you to invoice after 30 days, but they pay from 30 days from the invoice date, meaning that you're on a 60-day cycle. So it doesn't make sense for the supplier agreement that you have with the supplier who's giving you consignment or goods upfront on credit. It doesn't make sense that you pay them after 30 days because you don't have the money after 30 days. Which is why most of the time as an entrepreneur, you've got good deals, you make a lot of money, but you never see the money. You know, it reminds me of my conversation years ago, sitting with my accountant, he pulls my annual financial statements. Ah, there's no way. 1.1 million 800. There's no way. I'm a millionaire. Minus 587,000. Because it's what the gentleman who spoke, Mr. Rady spoke up here about. It's all vanity. It's top line amounts. They mean everything, but they actually mean nothing if they're not being managed well, which is why the actual careful knowledge of every single thing that's trickling in and out of your business is extremely, 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 extremely important. Now, finances to most entrepreneurs seems like a dull conversation. Up until I met a gentleman years ago who taught me that in actual fact, if you wanted to know if your marketing is working, check your finances. If you wanted to know that your sales team is working or not, check your finances. If you wanted to know that you're spending money or you can't afford your salaries, you can't afford your stuff, check your, sorry, <laughs> check your financial statements or your management accounts. And the difference between your financial statements and your management accounts is management accounts are, you know, a set of financial documents you get from your accountant each and every month. These then give you a monthly picture, a 30-day picture of what you did in the previous month. It gives you real-time knowledge so you're able to change stuff. Your annual financial statement is at the end of the financial year. These are the ones that pan out to a whole entire 12 month. Whenever your financial year is, majority of small business financial year ends at the end of February. So at the end of your financial year, this is what you then report back called CIP. I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, sometimes you try to go to the bank and open a bank account or you've opened a business account years ago, you try to, you know, to get credit, to try to go to the machine and withdraw money, then automatically you can't anymore because you're told that you're deregistered. 
is because that at the end of every 12 months, you must go to CIPC and you must declare whatever it is that you would have made. That's the conversation of the accountant. That's the conversation around your financial statements and your annual financial statements. And then when you grow and you become a bigger business, then you now start to have audited financial statements, which then most cases are not a big requirement for small business. And some of the things that we've challenged with um, institutions that require audited financial statements, especially for guys that make less than 10 million, is it doesn't make any sense because you could just simply get that from their financials. But manage your money. When you give the money out, because when you're giving goods out, you're giving money out to customers. Ensure, number one, don't give out goods to customers, Gascon Lord, unless you've built a good relationship with those customers, long-term relationships. Over and above the money conversation, some of the conversations that we negate or we avoid, we don't talk about is if you're going to be supplying stuff long term to customers, you need to ensure that you find a way of getting a lawyer to put together contracts so that they're at least enforceable to a certain degree. But the reason why you need to try and avoid it as much as possible is because as a small business owner, to try and enforce a legal action on an institution that owes you money then throws you in the red because you'll spend your money you know just in simply consulting a, a senior a senior attorney just in consulting a senior attorney you've spent your entire capital you, then you've ruined your day so you need to then ensure so some of the things that we looked at from a cash flow perspective to avoid this running hand to mouth red race you almost feel like you are working you're delivering the work mara you never have money Mara, you need to go to the bank and get an overdraft, but you have money, but you never have money. I'm sitting with invoices here. These people owe me, but I never have money. Was to then rethink our deliverable. So some of the things that we used to do is to say to customers, how much of the cost of any invoice? What percentage is our cost of sale on any invoice? Then we understood that our cost of sale, so the cost of sale in this case is the cost that's going to cost me to deliver the product. So if you are a jean and a motor jean 500, if you become very, very detailed, you'll be able to track how much you paid for the taxi that went into that specific purchase, how much you spent on the petrol that went into that, then you find that it's 250 rand. Then we then had to ask ourselves, okay, fine. If our cost of sale is 50% of what we are charging, then we'll ask the customer for 50%. Then should we then supply goods and services where the customer requires us to make alterations, we'll ask them for 50% upfront. Once we have the product, before we make the alteration, we need 25%. Before we deliver and we show you the goods are here and we send you a picture, before the driver leaves the house or I leave the house, then you must pay the balance. Then what that then did is it then gives you the cash liquidity to then appease my financial institution that I'm working with to show that there's cash flow moving. Because we were then trying to avoid a situation that we had ourselves in years ago where you are sitting with the creditor's book, uh, sorry, a debtor's book of over 500,000 rand. None of the people are giving you money because the economy is tough. So if the economy is tough, then let's play in a smart, tough way. Give me the money up front and I'll make sure that I deliver the product to you. And I'll make sure that I consistently deliver the product to you. Then if you don't have the money, it doesn't matter how promising you look, then I can't give you the product. Because sometimes we sort of feel like we are walking away from opportunities when we have not given the stock out on consignment. But you're not. You're actually putting yourself, uh, you're putting yourself in a terrible situation. And it's a psychological thing to sort of feel like they're giving us the opportunity. So you don't take that order unless you've got a purchase order and you deliver on it. You don't take that order unless you've got a contract on it. You don't take that order and deliver on it unless they've paid 50%. And you don't deliver the balance until you've got the balance of it. And you manage your customer relationships in that particular way and in that particular sense. Why? Because cash flow is king. If you do not have the cash, then you might won't be able to pay for the lights. If you don't have the lights, then the next customer is affected because of the last customer. Then it becomes a pity party, but you can't run your business on a pity party, right? Because you need to then tighten the grip on your credit. Uh, last slide. What is that? 
Mashonisa or to not to be. So you need to choose, you know, are you going to be a Mashonisa or are you going to be in business? You know, I sort of touched on all of the elements to this, be in business. And if you're going to be in business, then you need to be very cautious and have your hand on the pulse of what's going on. So when I sit with my mentor and I walk into the office, now I know it off by hand. Uh, so how many sales did you make? Okay, um, how many of them are prospective? How many of your prospectives do you need to convert? And what is the conversion length of those prospects? And how long does it take you to convert? No, no, no. Then the amount doesn't uh, add it up. So before we start our meeting, I need you to balance out the amount. Then you're sitting there. Then you're irritated. Then I used to be irritated. But he's like, if I'm, but his thing was, as humbly as I am, and it's Jew, if I make a billion, 1.8 billion a year, and I know every single part of my business, what is stopping you from knowing every single part of your business? You need to know every single part of your business. Know every single part of how the money is going in, how it's flowing in, how it's flowing out, how are you managing your relationships with your creditors, who are your creditors, you're managing the relationship with them even if you owe them and you don't avoid them in any given case. Last slide. One plus one is not always three. So sometimes we think that our relationship, especially with creditors, is linear. It's not linear. So, you know, you know the beautiful thing about what they do here earlier on, which is pitching. It's not just to sell the product, but it's to build your confidence. It's to rewire your thinking about standing in front of stages and not just selling your product, but standing in front of stages or in front of anyone and boldly asking for what you believe you deserve. And then they're after showing up for it. So when we understood this years ago, we then understood that, no, but Rabakolota, so they want their money. I get the financial institution. So how's about I call the financial institution and sit with them and say, that's if I can call it a 200 tower. Maraki chai sits 120,000. Nkan live 120,000 cash up front if require account. Then you find yourself, then you become a smart business person, a smart negotiator. Then in certain instances, we say, no, no, but okay, or oh, oh, you accept the terms. Oh, I just wanted to say we don't have the 120 now, but we'll pay it out over three months. Do you give us the... <laughs> then we then pay it over three months. Then we then understand that now we have saved 58,000 rand or 68,000 rand by laying out the capital up front. Why then do we then do that? In concert with our relationship with the credit manager, we are cash, we are cash flush or we are, we've got good cash flow in that particular instance, and we are looking to get better and bigger credit. So he says, then if you do this and you do it this well, then we further motivate to say, and these guys paid off a certain asset or item at record time. So these are guys you can trust with Zak. One good Yeah, sure. So I think, I think that's it. I think I've spoken more than, more than enough. But uh, we've got an amazing lady in the house. And I think the last thing for me is always everything that you've heard here, it's useless if you don't go out and do stuff about it. Then it becomes the same old monotonous, monotonous conversations. You heard where there's a pocket pause, yeah, 89 rand, what he buys this. Because all you need to do is just talk to the banker if you don't have a business bank account, open a startup bundle account, six month interest free, you get the pocket pause at 89 bucks. I mean, I'm simple, and I always tell anyone I work with, I'm simple. I mean, as a small business owner, as a business owner myself, I only work with brands that support small businesses actively. And that's always been my view and focus. Because this idea of being married to brands and products that you've never, ever seen Gokas, doing nothing Gokas, but you've got this insane loyalty. I don't know about you, but all I see is green, and green is the color of money. So green is what I support, and green is what I live by. And I'm not biased, but I can't believe it. I guess it's one of them, but I'm not going to be that is here. And I'm an amazing team that came all the way from Joburg and other parts of the country to be here. Why? Because you are important. So manage your debts very well. Manage your creditors very well. And know that not every debt is a bad debt. So it's got data to pay it off because not every debt is a bad debt. But all you need to do is manage it well. Thank you so much. Uh, back to the MC.